So here we are again. This is our last one, I promise, with modeling. We're going to read it and try to model the real world situation as best as we can uh, mathematically. So let's look at it. There's two pieces of paper today. So there's four situations. So the first situation is a photographer. So for each shoot, a photographer charges a fixed fee for expenses, then a fixed amount for each hour or part of an hour. And then X represents the time it takes and Y is the total amount the uh, photographer charges. So what am I looking for when I look at the next page in terms of thinking which equation it could be? So over time, does this increase in cost or decrease? So the more time it takes, the more money he charges. So this is an increasing function. And recognize that each hour or part of an hour gets charged the same. So if it's one and a half hours, that's two hours. Or if it's three hours and ten minutes, it's four hours. It's always going to round up to the nearest hour. But something that is increasing and fixed. So that word fixed, again, gives me an idea that it is linear. So which one of these equations on the next page could that situation be? So not linear, not linear. The difference between these two, uh, 2x subtract 2 and 50 times 1 plus x. So there's a fixed fee to begin with. So even before you start, when you plug in 0, there's an initial fee to begin with, a y-intercept. So that initial fee cannot be negative $2. So this is a line that's increasing but does not match my situation. Here, when I plug in 0, you start with 50 as a fixed fee, and then you increase from there. Now this one might be easier if I actually distribute. So 50 times x is 50x, and then 50 times 1 is 50, and now it's in the form mx plus b. So this is going to match what I'm looking at, which is a. So let's go back here. So the equation is 50x plus 50. So I'm going to graph that right here. So at 0, the amount is 50. So I'm going to start there. And then in one hour, it's going to increase by how much every hour? $50. So at 100, for 2, make sure I go over here, it's going to be 150. And I'll just stop here. At 200, that's going to be 3. Now, it'd be tempting to draw a line that connects this. But for the first hour, so up to here, how much is it charged? Make sure I'm drawing it correctly. So it starts with 50. Ha. Huh? I'm not going to draw anything here. For the first hour, it wouldn't cost $50. It starts with 50, and then you add another 50 to it. So this is what it's going to look like. So if you did 30 minutes, how much would it cost? Well, it's $50 plus another 50 for every hour. So the total cost, even for half an hour, would be $100, because they're going to round up for that. And notice I put a hole here, over here. So you have the initial amount, and then the hole, and then the very first, from one second all the way up to one minute, or one hour, it's going to cost $100. And then I go up. What happens when you're over one hour? Well, then it pops up to the next one. Make sure it's lined up here. So when I pop up to the next one, and ignore this, now it's at 150. If I pop up to the next one, if you go over two hours, now the cost is 200. So here you see your steps. So obviously in real world situations, I can't say that word, real world situations, these step functions come in handy when you go to whole numbers. So for one hour, how much is it going to cost? $100. If it's less between one and two hours, it's going to be $150. Between two and three, it's going to cost $200. Now let's go to the second page. What's the question that goes with it? So how much will the photographer charge for a seven hour shoot? So all I have to do is plug in. And that looks to be 400. So 
So the charge for seven hours is $400. Perfect. All right, three more. This is a little bit easier than yesterday, I think. So B, football. Maybe we'll see that again someday. So in a football league, each team plays all other teams twice. So X is the number of teams, and Y is the number of games played by one team. So it matters how many teams there are. So first of all, you can't have a league with one team. So the most you could start with, of course, is two. And if you have two teams and they play each other twice, then it's two. And if you have three and they play each other twice, then it's six, right? Or four, right? Let me see if I can get a cute little table of values and make sure I understand what's happening. So if you have two teams and you play each other twice, the number of games played by one team would be two. If you had three teams and the number of games played by one team and you play all the other teams twice, well, there's two other teams, right? You're one of the three. There's two other. You're going to play them twice, so that's four. If I go up to four, then there's three that are not you, and you play them, you get six. So can you see a pattern here? You're increasing by what number every time, how many times, how many games you're going to play. So the answer is two, right? You're increasing by two, and it's constant. So this is going to be a linear that increases by two. Let's go. So not linear, not linear. Here it is. Is it increasing by two? Yes. So this matches with B. Notice if you have zero teams, it doesn't make sense. And if you had one team, then it wouldn't make sense either. Because at one team, you'd have zero. Makes sense, because you can only start with two to begin with. And then from there, it works. So let's graph that. So we're going to start with 2, and then 4, 6, and so on. Notice there's no part of the graph here at 0 and 1. All right, let's answer the question. There are... Uh, 20 teams in a league, how many games will each of them play? So if there's 20 teams, then 20 times 2 take away uh, 2. So that's 40 take away 2. So how many games will each team play? And the answer is 38. All right, part C. What will the temperature of the coffee be? Oh, we haven't even looked at the next one. So the next model is coffee. And a coffee is a cup of coffee cools in a warm diner. So the time that is elapsed in minutes and the temperature of the coffee in Celsius. So if something's uh, cooling, it's decreasing over time, but it starts with the temperature and then decreases. So which one of these is decreasing over time? So the tempting one to pick oops, would be 100 divided by x. But the problem is, is that when you plug in 0, the initial temperature, you have something that's undefined. So it's not that one. So notice this exponential has a base that's less than 1. So 0.3 means it's decreasing. If I plug in 0 for x, that means the temperature is at 90 Celsius. That makes sense to me. That's not quite boiling, a little bit less, and then it cools from there. So decreasing starting at 90. Makes sense. That's part C. So the equation that I would be graphing then is y equals 20 plus 70.3 to the x. So again, because the base is less than 1, it's decreasing. When I plug in 0, the answer is 90, and then it decreases from there. So I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. That's where I'm starting, 
and then it decreases from there. Now, we did this question the other day. What's the asymptote? What temperature is it going to get closer to and closer to but never get there? And the answer is 20. So that number 20, this, what you have beside 20, will never be zero and never be negative. So this will get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's going to get closer to 20, but it will never equal 20 and never be less than 20. So there's your asymptote. So over time, that's what it's going to look like. I'm just going to sketch it. So over time, that's what it's going to look like. This here, we don't have negative values there, but there's the coffee cooling over time. And then let's answer the question that's being asked. So what will the temperature of the coffee be after three minutes? So I'm going to plug in. And then this is really, I think, a, a calculator question where you then would plug it in your calculator. If you did plug that into your calculator, according to my answer key, it's about 21.89. So almost 22 degrees Celsius. So after three minutes, the coffee's temperature is 21.89 degrees Celsius. Last one. So obviously I know the last one's probably going to match up with this one, right? 100 divided by x. So why is that? So let's go here and I'm going to write it in, trust it, and then be able to graph it. So it says Tanya saved a fixed amount each week until she has enough money in the bank to buy a coat. And so x is the amount saved each week, uh, the time that it takes Tanya to save enough for the coat. So if she saves nothing, she doesn't get a coat. Hmm. If she saves a dollar each week, how long would it take her? A hundred, right? Weeks. If she saved a hundred dollars a week, it would just take her one week. So this is going to describe that coat. So zero, if she saves nothing, she doesn't get the coat. So there's an asymptote there. And then as you graph this, you can like pick from one and we'll go to like 10. So in one week, it would take one week if she saved $100 to buy the coat because it costs that much. Oh, my over here. In 10 weeks, how long would it take her? And the answer is if she saved $10 a week, it would take 10 weeks to save for that coat. And I know that this is being curved in this way. Now the horizontal asymptote in this case is zero. So we have two asymptotes here. Remember, why is the time it takes? So we can't have a zero amount of time that it takes. That's the y. And we can't have zero amount saved each week. That's the x. So zeros are not in play, just the other numbers. See that over time, how long it would take to save for that coat. So super fast at the beginning, and then it would get slower after that in terms of how many weeks, how much do you save. So you save a uh, This is the time it takes. So it would take less and less time. So you save a dollar a week, it would take 100 weeks. And then the more you save, the quicker it would take. So the less time. So the time decreases, but it will never be zero. Never be instantaneous. So here's your graph of that situation of saving up for a coat. There's your equation. Let's go and answer the last question. If Tanya saves $5 a week, how long would it take? So at $5 a week, it would take how many weeks to be able to save up for a coat? And the answer is 20 weeks. And that's it. Mr. G Math, over and out. Good job doing your work today.